Hey everybody, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. It is so wonderful to see you. <clears throat> I hope this message, this reading, this session finds you well. All right, so I just wanna check in with the collective. I don't really have an agenda for the collective. Um, I'm just being called to pull for morning coffee right now. So that's what we're gonna do. It's so good to see you all again. Um, if you are returning, what's up squad? And if you are new, hey, I'm Eric. It's nice to meet you. Two more shuffles for you guys. Um, the collective has been seeing drastic changes lately. <clears throat> These changes are mostly internal and thus the changes are very subtle. So it's not until it, reach a it reaches this, this change or this transformation reaches a critical mass that you at actually even start to see the results of this change. But then he here's the thing, once this change reaches critical mass, reaches critical level, reaches critical tipping point, then ma all of a sudden massive ripple effects are um, the effect. So by the time you perceive of and or notice this change, or at least it's tangible, now it's huge. Where it started out as subtle to begin with. What's the story for the collective right now, Spirit? We have the lovers and it is in reverse. The lovers reversed. Something is out of divine alignment. <clears throat> the lovers here, I'm feeling an energy of losing, uh, losing commitment, but in losing this commitment, I'm seeing fire. So this is giving me passion. So this is losing your commitment towards something that you were once passionate about. So in essence, this is also then losing this passion. So in essence, this fire has gone out. I am seeing the Ace of Wands. I'm seeing the Wands suit in my head here. This is out of divine alignment. Now, this very well could have been something that you were at one point in your life in divine alignment with. Aha! This has been part of the message for the collective lately. Um, light workers, those of us who identify as light workers, who understand the laws of light working, have kind of accepted a role in that, um, have chosen to become chosen, if you want to, if you will. Um, our alignment is changing. Our job is changing. Our assignments are changing so whereas you may still be within the same realms within the same social groups within the same dynamics as you were before now you are being called to act or perceive or persist it's more to act or persist with these same challenges if you will but in a very new way our job i want to say our job title is changing while we're still remaining light workers our job title titles are changing or our job descriptions are changing. So you're playing very new and or I'm hearing very strongly, very opposite roles than you were pay playing in the past. You may have gone from being the victim to the villain. Uh, you may have gone from the angel to the devil. You may have, there's, some, there's an emphasis here on becoming some sort of bad guy or um, resistance to something. It's no longer in, whatever this is for you, whatever you're involved with here, it's no longer in alignment for you. You have the lovers in reverse. This has changed drastically. Now this doesn't make you out to actually be a villain, but in cases where people are still standing in that same energy, you are now standing up in opposition to them by no longer aligning with their causes. And that for part of you, that is what you're realizing here. This is very superficial. This is very territorial. And in many cases, these individuals aren't even, or maybe cannot even acknowledge the fact that they are in fact playing a manipulative game themselves. Whereas they may be standing up as the victor, as the righteous one, as the more, as the ones having or retaining the moral high ground what they're not recognizing or realizing is that they are all still playing the same game with each other that they are at, accusing each other of and that they are at war with each other because of each and every piece of this game of this puzzle whatever this is for you what i'm seeing is each and every part of this situation that is in oppos in opposition with each other and it feels like multiple factions Okay, this is not like an A, uh, this is not like 
two sides against each other. It's not even three. I'm seeing like four. Could be more, but I am seeing, I'm seeing at least four. But I am seeing multiple little bubbles that are their own different color, which represents their own different identity and alignment. And they're all flowing around each other, but they're all like kind of at war with each other. And you're stepping out of it and seeing like, see, this is exactly the problem. You're all perpetuating the same thing and you don't even realize it or you don't want to admit it. So in essence, it feels like the person who is saying this here, who is stepping away from this game, is literally I'm seeing the person that's stepping into the 5D mentality, um, but also is taking a much higher moral high ground because they're choosing not even to engage in this circumstance and they are rather in choo choosing to step above this and see the higher, a bigger picture, which does include taking certain responsibilities for oneself and how you're acting and responding because from this point of view here, fifth, kind of even leading up into the sixth dimension, it's about working together as a community, as a unit, rather than such in such an individualistic state. Now, this does not mean that you are losing any of your individuality. Oh, no, no, my friend. Your individ individuality is actually being purified by you going through this challenge of seeing what's really going on in all of us here and doing our part to fix it, to heal it, to change it. You are being, your individuality is being purified and you are becoming thus more of your own natural true self while still working in this community, in this faction, in this group, so to speak. Wow. What's next for the collective then? What's going on? Tell me the story, please, spirit. The lovers here. Next we have the moon. Change, transformation is what I'm getting from the moon. Also, reflection. Very clearly, reflection. I'm seeing an individual see, looking at their, gazing into their reflection in the moonlight in a pond, in a field. This is almost giving me some Narcissus energy. But ironically enough, that's not really the energy that I feel in here. That's just when I look at this image, this is the first thing I see. Narcissus looking at himself in the reflection of the water. But really, they didn't really have much in the way of mirrors back when this, when this story was, when this story happened. So, okay, he would be looking at his reflection in a pool, a body of water. I wonder, so in, I, I wonder if in this situation, you or this individual that this reading resonates for or is meant for, um, you are starting to face some of your own narcissistic tendencies, potentially. And I am seeing how you're recognizing or realizing or coming to terms with how that may have been perpetuated by family. More specifically, I am hearing for some of you, your father. <laughs> Even if there are some traits that have come from your mother, it really feels like the father energy here has been the driving force. So maybe just the masculine energy, which then translates into society as a whole, because society is heavily masculine driven, is literally built for the man, the masculine. Built for, designed by. You get what I'm saying? So it may not necessarily be your father or any sort of father figure in your life other than just like the higher, the higher up, the higher tiers of this masculine society, we'll say. But there is a tendency to, for some of you here, I am seeing this, so I'm going to throw it out there. For some of you, this is a reflection of your own narcissistic tendencies. This being an opportunity to gain a reflection a direct reflection of your own narcissistic tendencies, not to hurt you, not to shame you, not to harm you, but to help you see so that you can make the necessary changes for yourself. This is also why you are re recognizing that this, whatever is no longer in alignment for you here, the lovers, this, you're, this is a reason why. So even then, even if this is, does not represent anything sort of narcissistic in nature, it's the reflection, because reflection is really what stood out here. But it is also tied to change and transformation. The uh, being in a, a state of darkness before the sun rises up. I'm hearing the dark, uh, the, the calm before the storm, actually. The storm being the aftermath of whatever change is to come from some sort of transformative and enlightening, I really want to say enlightening energy because I do feel like there is a a level of being able to really get to the bottom of something, seeing very clearly through this situation and understanding what needs to be done with the moon here. 
heightened sense of self-awareness, but also heightened sense of intuitive awareness. If you find your intuition is really peaking right now, you may want to take no, once you notice that, take that same energy and turn it towards yourself. No matter how scary that may be. I know, I know, I know that can be terrifying, but also it's only terrifying because it's something that's really going to be very extremely powerful for you. And whatever part of you that is that would be negative effectively, negatively affected here because it faces transformation judgment, yes, but also subsequently transformation, it will, it will benefit you in the end. So I think what you're really afraid of when you think of this energy, of this idea of turning this highly intuitive energy inwards towards yourself, I feel like what you're truly afraid of is the power you will gain from it. Bec and you may really want to look at that fear because that could be this could be, I'm getting energies of like, this is why you cut this power off. Only when you understand what you were afraid of, what the driving force of this fear was behind cutting this off, will you be able to heal that and subsequently turn it back on? But some of you are actively saying, I don't want to turn it back on. Are you sure about that? Why are you, why, what? Now this could be that part of you that is afraid. Okay, that makes sense. Well, I don't, I don't want to turn that back on. Mm. But you do, though. The lover's in reverse. You do. One more for the collective here. What do we got going on, Spirit? Oh, yeah. Um, here's judgment. Right here. So you can see the words, but they're naked, so we're trying to there's judgment right there, okay? Um, I felt this coming. We all felt this coming. Knight of Pentacles. Yeah, we knew this was coming. What was, what's done in the darkness is coming to the light. You do have the Queen of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. And what I am hearing with the Queen of Pentacles here is that you're going to be rewarded. Your hard work is about to pay off somehow. Your self-respect, your dignity, <clears throat> your fine-tuning... Self-respect and dignity are really standing out here. Uh, but see, with the Knight of Pentacles and Judgment also, this is an energy of, um, again, hard work is about to pay off. Your hard work is about to pay off in some really profound ways, is what I want to say here. Queen of Pentacles, Eight of Cups, Four of Swords, yikes, Five of Cups, yes, but the star, yes, to the Two of Cups and Justice, the Hanged Man and the Wheel of, Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so, how, uh, however you have cut this off, whatever, this, whatever it has been that has been cut off, it's through a, a sense of righteous awareness, and in this situation, that is good. Doesn't mean you don't have anything to mourn. You do, obviously. Okay, even if it's just the mourning of the past, no matter how elated or excited you may be to move on from that past, there still needs to be a moment of recognition for the life that was. You know, a moment of reverence, a moment of respect, of an, a moment of acknowledgement, a moment of reflection. Hello, reflection. So you're actively moving. You're actively moving forward here. Judgment to the Knight of Pentacles. I mean, the Knight of Pentacles is the energy that was leading up to this judgment, but as you're moving through this judgmental period, this judgment energy, you are maintaining the Knight of Pentacles energy throughout and are exiting it through the Knight of Pentacles energy, keeping steady, moving forward, keeping all your ducks in a row, spiritually speaking. This is a checkpoint. This is definitely a checkpoint. And you have left some things behind, Queen of Pentacles, four, of, I'm sorry, Queen of Pentacles, eight of cups. You have left some things behind of because of your willingness to change because of your newly instated sense of self-worth. Newly reinstated, newly recuperated, newly rebuilt, newly dignified, newly gratified, newly ratified sense of self-worth doesn't mean you don't have things to mourn five of cups could be energies of family sure but right behind that is the star okay queen of pentacles eight of cups four of swords five of cups the star you're keeping your eye on the prize you're working together within yourself two of cups and that's bringing justice into your life 
the hanged man, the wheel of fortune, the queen of wands, the page of pentacles, the high priestess strength, shit, the tower. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, we, we knew that. I mean, we already knew. We already knew that. Okay. <laughs> Let's get some clarification here. And I have been channeling this energy for the collective lately. We are in a void period. We are, and I was definitely channeling this over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Check the link in the description box below. But these are energies of being in limbo, being in a void energy. Many of us have been extremely tired lately. All I've really wanted to do for the last two months since November is rest. But we are in a transitional period. And what I'm seeing here is slowly but surely keeping the same pace, same steady space, pace we've been keeping for the last damn near two years is what I'm feeling. All right. But keeping that same pace as we move through a checkpoint, you could see this as like something similar to the easy pass lane on the highway or one of the like a trigger warning. I don't mean to trigger anybody, but like going through some sort of scanning, uh, maybe <laughs> in the airport or I don't want to say that because <laughs> it's going to trigger people. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, what else? Just like going through some, like a gateway or a portal, like you're moving through and it's checking. Yes, there is a level of checking your credentials here. I mean, this is a portal. This is a gateway. If you don't match up, it's not going to let you pass through. I am seeing you pass through though. Well, I'm hearing with flying colors. Okay. I'm gonna give this five shuffles and then we're gonna start clarifying. Two. The King of Swords. Thank you. The deck was reversed. Three. Objectivity. Four. Hold on just a moment. Okay, sorry about that. All right, last shuffle. This is five. For clarity's sake. Okay, King of Swords, Ace of Cups. Oh. Judgment. King of Swords, Ace of Cups, Judgment is at the bottom of the deck right now. I'm going to keep shuffling, but I wanted to, this wanted to show itself. This is the stance that I believe you are keeping. Underneath all of this is the Six of Cups and the Seven of Wands. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, you're really defending yourself against the past. You really learned from the past. You're really intending on growing from the past. I'm picking up on a shit ton of inner child work, really going back to that state of mind that you were in when you were in those, in, in those stages in your childhood, revisiting those, some of them extremely painful energies, very, see, King of Swords, I mean, you really should give yourself a, a pat on the back because you don't understand fully the strength that it takes to go back into those deep recesses of your subconscious and reveal those things to yourself see those things again, feel through it again, okay? And you have a very deep understanding of what the past has been for you and what you no longer want to proceed with in your future. Six of Cups, Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands is that, uh, it's a no for me. That's a, that's, a, that's a barrier, that's a hard no, that's a barrier, that's an absolutely not in some cases, like never coming back to, never going back there again, this is five. So I wanna start with the Knight of Pentacles, the work that you have done. King of Swords is still at the bottom of the deck. Okay. Knight of Pentacles. This work that you've been doing. Queen of Wands. The Chariot. Yes. Eight of Swords. Page of Pentacles. So there's something that you have been blocked from. The blockages have been necessary, but, and yes, it's because it's to learn a lesson, but the blockages were necessary because there were mental blockages at first. Well, yes, 
that were causing this block in your pathway. You've been working through them diligently. Queen of Wands to the Chariot is, yes, and, and, the, and the Knight of Pentacles wanted to come with it. The, the Queen of Wands, oh look, wait, there's more. The Hermit. That actually only strengthens the message here. What I was gonna say is the Queen of Wands represents you getting into an energy of receptivity in terms of aligning with your life path, your life purpose, the chariot. And then underneath that, hiding behind the Queen of Wands, the root cause to this, and because I felt like the Queen of Wands energy was very, very pure, very, very pure. This is feminine energy, but of some of the highest vibrations, okay? This does not feel selfish, egotistical, narcissistic at all. I mean, from a lower point of view, you could still call it selfish because you're focusing on attracting things that you just truly desire towards you. But it is the focus that you are channeling or attracting these things that is representative of the purity because what you are focused on attracting towards yourself is purely what you are meant to do here. It is your life purpose. It is very much your North Node energy. And when you are focused there, yes, it is a desire, it is a desire that of yours that desires to be fulfilled, but it's connected to a higher spiritual purpose, which in fact, in turn, serves all. There's the purity of it right there. And that's all representative of the hermit. This is a very high vibrational expression of the Queen of Wands energy. I really, really want to say some of the highest forms of expression, vibratorily speaking, vibrationally speaking. Now, <clears throat> you do have the Page of Pentacles with the Eight of Swords here. I do feel like some sort of business endeavor, some sort of new start has been blocked. But take you back to the Knight of Pentacles that is leading you towards this judgment you have been diligently working on fixing these blockages which are mainly mental in nature uh, overall energy here is the seven of cups <clears throat> underneath the seven of cups is the ace of wands ten of wands yes two of cups again yes so there it has been now the seven of cups is kind of giving me a smoky a steamy a foggy type of energy with the ace of wands behind it there is like feeling like a desire to clear this fog and be rid of the burden involved with it, brought on by it, okay? Seven of Cups, Ace of Wands, Ten of Wands under that. I should wrap this up because the sun is making things a bit too bright. Um, let's talk about the moon next, because I feel like this is where the blockage is. Tell me the moon, please, for the collective. The Empress. The Nine of Pentacles, <laughs> which is the pre-Empress energy. Strong, it's very strong feminine energy in this. We could be talking to divine feminine energy, justice, two of swords, eight of pentacles. You do haven't known what. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 This is what I was feeling here. Now the card at the bottom of the deck has tr confirmed it. Empress to the Nine of Pentacles. Now, we've been talking about this Nine of Pentacles energy for the collective a lot lately, going from that Nine of Cups, that comfort zone energy, into that Nine of Pentacles. Why? Because we are looking for our Ten of Pentacles. We want the stability. We want the solidity. We want the foundation. Or at least this person does, because initially they've been showing up as the Queen of Pentacles anyway. That is the epitome of foundation, of stability right there, alongside her companion with the King of Pentacles, right? Okay. And what I was getting in this Empress energy with the Nine of Pentacles, I was starting to get a feeling of the Empress also representing a nurturing, loving energy, a cocoon, if you will, while you actually fit into this Nine of Pentacles state. Knight of Pentacles, this is where you're moving yourself towards. It's bringing justice into your life. Okay. Now you have that with the Two of Swords and the Eight of Pentacles. This could be one of two things. It could be you not necessarily knowing what actions to take. And it could also represent focusing solely on your work and nothing else. Now, it could also be both of those. Okay, you and, and what I feel like is happening in this transformation here. Oh, confirmed by death being at the bottom of the deck. Okay, with the five of cups. Okay. But 
what this transformation, what you're focusing on, may, it, it, it feels like you don't necessarily, necessarily know where to go, how to proceed. And yet you are still focused on the channeling of that energy in order to one day get the answer. There may be some sort of decision that you have to make here with this Two of Swords. The Two of Swords could also be representative of the two worlds, the two mental realities. Uh, one that, the one that you're transitioning out of versus the one that you're transitioning into. Okay, and that work could be focused on right now making, going through that mental transformation to leave the, the past mental experience and reality behind and to move on into the next one. There is a hell of a lot of work going on here. So this is you doing that work to get into, to fit into the Nine of Pentacles energy. And the Empress energy is here, which technically the Empress is still you. You are moving into this Empress energy. You are already in this Empress energy. Justice is saying that you're moving into a greater, 555 five, five on the counter, a greater, higher vibratory, vibratory expression of this natural Empress energy. And you actually could be someone who is either male or female, physically speaking, who has identified more with the masculine side of things. And this transformation really could be for you actually entering into a more feminine phase. So your pendulum is swinging from the masculine, maybe even in cases the extreme masculine. Now it's got to swing into, in many cases, the extreme feminine. You've got to go through that pendulum swinging of reducing or uh, altering the momentum over time before you can be more balanced okay that's what's ha that's what's starting to happen for some of you that's what i'm picking up on here for others of us this is just purifying more of our feminine essence sinking deeper into more of our feminine essence now as i started speaking of the feminine energy that is surrounding the situation these two cards came flying out It's the Page of Swords and the Three of Cups. So this is telling me that there are people watching you. And what I'm getting is that these are, these are the people that you are transforming out of. Yeah. These are the associations that you're transforming out of. The Seven of Cups is now coming out with that. This is your feminine energy guiding you. Sending the red flag, sending the warning because there are individuals who are now aware either are aware of who you are and what it is you have to offer and that's mainly because you are pulling yourself away and or they are now aware of the fact that you are aware of who you are and what it is you have to offer while they may have been fully aware of this the whole time and have been absolutely using you in the process why because you lacked the awareness enough to set a boundary between them so that they couldn't vampirically take from you I'm seeing them staying in the smoke, the haze, seven of cups, while you are pulling away. It's just fading away. And I think this is, this is leading us into the lovers in reverse. So clarify the lovers in reverse, please. These are social associations. These are romantic associations, or romantic affiliations. These are soul level contracts. These are twin flame contracts. These are divine soulmate contracts. These are... These are things that just went wrong. And I'm seeing that there's like a shedding of it. There's a massive, whether this is just within you or what I'm seeing is the collective, but I'm seeing just a massive dump of blah, 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 of all these attachments, these closures, I wanna call them also. Show me the lovers in reverse, but this does feel heavily interpersonal. Associations, friends group, friendships, affiliations, alliances. Misalliances. <laughs> and by, oh, misalliances, missed alliances, like alliances that have never, never got a chance to happen because something got twisted and, and fucked up within it and then people started hating each other or maybe even hating themselves, which then caused them to hate each other, okay? But the first card to clarify the lovers here is the seven of pentacles. And this is really, this is really just a question of, is this really working or not? Like, let's be real. Let's be honest with ourselves about this, okay? Is this working or not? Seven of Pentacles. It's either a yes or a no question. This is giving me very Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords was coming out for the Patreon Collective. Show me the lovers in reverse. The collective here. The King of Wands. Oof. Authority. Personal power. I'm hearing just say no. There's one more card in there. Oh, shit. But here's the Ten of... Yeah, that's it. 
and then the wheel of fortune oh my God. <laughs> ah, to the knight of pentacles overall energy is the wheel of fortune to the knight of pentacles okay confirmation right there recurring theme this is what you're slowly but steadily moving forward towards also i want to say navigating towards this is what you're navigating towards Ten of Pentacles here with the uh, Seven of Pentacles, King of Wands, Ten of Pentacles. I mean, this King of Wands feels like this is this is finally the masculine coming through in this reading because this reading has been heavily feminine dominant. So this is somebody here who has strongly who has mastered their feminine levels on in some pretty efficient ways. I'm not saying you're fully mastered here, but I'm saying you have gained a level of proficiency for sure, all right? One that you did not previously have. And it's strengthened because you have been able to reconcile most, if not all, some, if not all, of your discrepancies between masculine and feminine within you. That's why the Two of Cups keeps coming out for the collective, because you have rec reconciled within in many significant ways. ways significant enough to bring you to a level of high endurance and proficiency is what I'm hearing. And that is being shown in the King of Wands. Also in levels of being able to assert yourself. And you're, being, and you're able to show up in this King and Queen of Wands energy. Remember the Queen of Wands did show herself. Yes, she showed herself with judgment and the Knight of Pentacles. This King of Wands matches the purity of that Queen of Wands. Why? Because you are still connected divinely connected and are channeling that energy through yourself queen of wands the chariot and so the masculine side of this in the directing the action taking the forcefulness sure of that energy going after what it is you have been channeling with this queen and then once the windows of opportunity take uh, uh, present themselves you take the action in that alignment it's still pure because it's still coming from the same pure and harmonized place Okay, to the Ten of Pentacles. You're the Seven of Pentacles, King of Wands, to the Ten of Pentacles. You're making a major shift. This is a major shift in direction. One that is possible because of the foundation that you have been built. So now I want to say you're getting into greater alignment. That's exactly what's happening here. Um, I have been channeling that we've been shifting timelines for the collective here. That's over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Uh, but... This is that. This is, this is making that pivot, making that shift. Seven of Pentacles. What is working here? What is not working here? Is this in divine alignment? Is this really what I want to be moving forward towards? How I want to be pursuing things? Is this divine alignment? Yes or no? Yes, some things are. Good. Let's keep that trajectory. Some things aren't. Let's make the appropriate actions to shift in the proper direction. That's what's happening here. Seven of Pentacles. King of, Pent well, King of Wands. Why? Because we're, he we're heading for the Ten of Pentacles. And right now, you're in the Eight of Swords. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, shit. You're in the Eight of Pentacles. I'm sorry. Eight of Pentacles, Two of Swords. Mental blockage. Until this mental blockage is cleared, you won't be able to proceed. And as I was channeling that message, I noticed that the deck has split. The deck has split to the sun in reverse. No, that is not necessar necessarily something that you want to hear right now. But it is still a good message, the sun, because you have been given a clue, a choice even, as to how to proceed. You, know, you now know. Eight of Swords, Page of Pentacles. You are going to be mentally blocked until you can get this mental reality, mental circumstance, this shift underway or and or in order quite frankly in order but it has to be gotten has to get it has to get underway before it can get even get in order right uh -huh. <laughs> the sun in reverse okay but you have now been put on to game this is what's happening this is what if this resonated for you this whole time this is what's happening so no, you don't want to hear that this is not actually going to happen until you make this shift. Okay, but it is the, the, the awareness that you need it, the knowledge that you need it, the sun in reverse. There is still a way out. The sun is still here. Whether it's upright or reversed, it doesn't matter. It's still the most positive card in the deck, okay? Wheel of Fortune, that's what you're navigating yourself towards. All right? 
I'm gonna get closing Oracle guidance for us. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this reading, please make sure to like it, share it with your friends, subscribe, leave a comment. Check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Last shuffle. All right, spirit. Closing messages, please, for the collective here. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Wow. Ooh, right underneath at the bottom of the deck, overall energy is resurrection or resurrection. Yeah, resurrection. Phoenix, Phoenix from the ashes region, my friend. Shake off the past and rise again. Reinvent yourself and you'll rise up from the ashes even more powerful. Okay, first card that came out that showed itself is inner warrior. I know that shit is right, hunty. All right, channel your inner strength to subdue and subtly control the issues at hand. Trust your power. And then you have rebuilding and walking unscathed. Rebuilding is reevaluate your life and adjust to thrive in your new circumstances. Focus on what you can control. Walking unscathed says you are fortunate. A trap was laid out for you, but you were too smart, too smart to fall for it. This walking unscathed energy absolutely has been resonating with the collective for a while. Check out Patreon. We have one last card here that came out face down. Something that you don't know. What is hidden? What is unseen? Ooh. Bad gossip. People are gossiping behind your back. It would be wise to be careful with your actions right now. Kind of makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. This is hidden from you. And this is get, I'm giving, like it's, this is giving all out spiritual warfare. Why? Because you are shifting, you are changing timelines and you are moving into a higher reality, a higher vibrational experience, a higher awareness. And people don't like it because if you're being perceived as leaving them behind, you're being perceived as better than them, better than someone else, and you're not. You are simply doing the inner work that it takes to rise above these challenges, these cycles, these karmic loops, these ancestral karmic loops. And your ancestors are incredibly proud of you for making these changes for them, on behalf of them, these changes that they were unable to make in their own life lifetimes. But this is all divinely guided anyway. So, okay, yeah, let there be bad gossip. Who, who really cares? Well, I mean like care enough to not put yourself in a position to where now that bad gossip is being used against you. You know what I mean? But like, keep yourself in alignment. The divine will always protect you. But some of you, you just, just know. It doesn't, need, it doesn't even fucking matter who they are or what they're saying. Just know that divine alignment is at hand. Just know, be aware, these things are happening. And it's most likely what I'm feeling, I don't wanna give, I'm not gonna spill too much of the tea, but what I'm feeling here is these are from some people that you really would not expect. And this is not to scare you. This is not to make you paranoid. This is just to say, whoa, listen, I mean, don't, try not to be foolish. Think of it as anyone that does not align with you. Not to say that you're better than them, but you are bringing a higher vibration. You are bringing a higher vi vibratory awareness. You are bringing light, some serious light to these situations. And that is going to trigger the inner demons of these people around you who have not reached this level of healing yet, just like it did you when you were down there. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how close to them you have been. Y'all could have been twins, whether fraternal or maternal, but worth, I mean, a, a, Figuratively speaking, attached at the hip, right? And now all of a sudden the vibrational ch vibrations have changed and now you are mortal enemies. It's nothing personal. It is a trigger of the inner demon, the darkness, the unaware, the unseen, the unhealed darkness in another that creates those 
dynamics and reactions. It's not personal. Just be aware of that and choose a higher vibratory thought. What would that be? One of forgiveness. You could, uh, forgiveness, understanding, you could start there. If you can jump all the way to love, okay. But let's start with forgiveness and understanding and then work our way from there. Because you need to understand that these people are hurt just like you were. Maybe not in the same ways, but people all, everybody experiences their own level of tra trauma and pain, right? You may not see it as, I feel like I'm rambling now, but I, this needs to, I feel like this needs to be said. You may not see it as equal to yours, but at least understand that it's trauma for them. So it can incite similar rea reactions. You get what I'm saying? Let's start with understanding and work towards forgiveness. And then we can work towards that love, right? Okay, I'm gonna go. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. If you would like more steady readings, more content with me, if you would like to become part of the deeper collective, check out Patreon. Yeah, patreon.com slash divine conversations. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>